When I think of multi-channel mode, my mind immediately goes to music. Back in the late 70s and early 80s, there were a series of music synthesizers such as the Roland TB303 or the Korg MS-20. At the time, both of these tools were widely misunderstood and as such, production ceased. A decade later, several musicians began to experiment with these synthesizers in various styles of music. This new sound rocketed into the spotlight and suddenly these relics were pieces of equipment that everyone had to have. Before I jump right into the meat of multi-channel image mode, let's talk a little bit about how Photoshop addresses multi-channel color. Come down here to the right to the channels panel and open that up. Now you can see here we have the RGB color mode, which is the one we're working in, divided up into a red, green, and a blue channel. If we select just one of these channels, for instance red, then you'll see that here Photoshop shows us just a grayscale image. Now essentially, this is how Photoshop views our image. It views it in several grayscale images, which it then applies color to. So what does this mean for us? In the RGB image mode, we have the red channel and the green channel and the blue channel all separated. If you turn on any two of these in combination, you can see the result of just those two channels combined and then switching all of them back on gives us our full color image. As we talked about before with the RGB color space, RGB is additive color, so you add the red, green, and blue channel together and that gives us this full color image. So what does this mean for multi-channel? Photoshop knows that these channels, since we're working in the red, green, blue color space, Photoshop knows that the red channel is red, the green channel is green, and the blue channel is blue. The same goes for CMYK. We switch over to that image mode CMYK color, hit OK, and you'll notice that in our channels panel, everything switched over to cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And these grayscales are very different from the red, green, and blue counterparts. Now you can see we've divided the image up into four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and this is how we get our color. Real quick, if we hit Control K, that brings up our preferences menu, click on interface, and then click on show channels in color, you can see that the images, the grayscale images down here in the channels panel, now coincide with the color that they represent. So the cyan channel shows up as cyan, magenta, magenta, yellow, and black. The multi-channel color space is interesting because you can create a CMYK color space from the multi-channel color space. You can create red, green, blue. You can create uh, a lab or LAB color palette. But also, when we switch over to multi-channel, first I'm going to convert back to RGB, and then I'm going to switch to multi-channel. Now, when we get into multi-channel mode, prepare to confuse Photoshop. By default, multi-channel mode does not assign a specific color to each of the channels. It simply puts the information in the channel and allows you to dictate how you would like it to show up. So we're going to switch to multi-channel here. And the first thing you're going to notice is that our red, green, and blue channels have now changed to cyan, magenta, and yellow. Photoshop assumes that we're working in print, throws us cyan, magenta, and yellow. However, if we hit Control K and then drop down interface and shut off show channels in color, hit OK. If you look at the grayscale images here in the channels, let me blow these up a little bit by dropping down to panel options and then selecting the large thumbnail, click OK. These grayscale images that represent each of the channels have not changed. The difference is Photoshop has just assigned them a different color. There are a lot of things that we can do with this. The first thing we can do, since we have cyan, magenta, and yellow already, is let's create a black channel and then just convert this to CMYK color. Now the way that we do that is let's select one of these colors. In this case, I'm going to take a look at these colors independently and decide which one I want to create a black channel from. I'll probably combine, just taking a look at the, the thumbnails here, I'm probably going to combine the cyan and the magenta because I want a little bit from each, uh, and then I'm going to change that up a little bit. So, here's what I'm going to do. Select cyan. Go up to the image menu and drop down to calculations. Select calculations. Now you can see here we've opened up a new dialog box and layer background. From the, I'm going to create a black plate from the cyan and magenta channels. Blending, I'm going to multiply. Opacity 50%, maybe less, opacity 20%. Now maybe I'll screen. All right, I'm going to click linear dodge or add. Drop the opacity down to 20%. Result, new channel and select OK. Now that we have this channel, it's labeled Spot Color 1. I'm going to jump over into Layers and go up here to Image, Adjustments. I'll select Levels. 
and I'm going to lighten the midtones. I only want a little bit of black here. I don't want to overpower everything, but I do want a solid black, so I'm also going to pull in the blacks. All right, now hit OK. Now watch this. Double click the alpha channel. You can see that initially the color is set to yellow, so I'm going to select the yellow and go down here to CMYK. In the Y, change that to zero. In the K, change that to 100. Hit OK. And now you can see that it automatically changed it to black because we set that up in the options that this was going to be black when we set 100% black. Photoshop automatically knew that's what we were doing. Now we're getting somewhere. We have something that's a little similar to our original image. So now we can come back up here to the images menu. And since we have all four channels, select mode, CMYK color, and immediately Photoshop knows exactly what to do. This particular image, since we created our own black channel from cyan and magenta, isn't identical to our original image. I'll create a snapshot here in the history. Just call it snapshot one, that's fine. Scroll back up and check out the original image compared to what we have now. So why does the multi-channel color space make me think of music? When we talk about the Roland TB303, this is a classic music synthesizer. The Roland TB303's original purpose was to allow a guitarist to have a bass line accompaniment while he was practicing without having a bass player in the room. Here, the thought was that you could set up a bass line, have it repeat over and over and over while you were memorizing your part and practicing along with it. This concept never really took off. And part of the reason is because one, nothing really takes the place of jamming with a bass player as a guitarist, trust me. Two, it was such a revolutionary piece of equipment that no one really knew what to make of it. So they discontinued it. Then in the 90s, musicians got into synthesized sounds and synthesized instruments. At some point, musicians began using this in songs as a standalone instrument because of the interesting sounds that you could produce with it that could not be produced anywhere else. Back to multi-channel. Most of the time, the multi-channel image mode is used specifically for compositing other layers. You can also store mask channels here. It makes certain workflows a little bit easier because it doesn't store any of the color information and you can change the way color is handled inside multi-channel mode. Real quick, if we jump back into multi-channel mode, hit OK. Now if we take this cyan channel, double click it, we've got color, click on the color square, change the cyan to zero, drop down here to yellow, change that to 100%. Hit OK, now we have two yellow channels. We'll take our original channel, change that to cyan. In the same way, click on the color box, drop down to yellow, zero, back up to cyan, 100, and hit OK. Now, since there are no colors assigned to these channels, only grayscale, which Photoshop will then interpret as color, you can see that we've completely changed the image. And now it looks like Justin's been eating at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. He got up to the line, saw that they were giving out everlasting gobstoppers, and just started munching down on a couple of them. Before you know it, he tasted blueberry pie, and this is how he turned out. If we then change back over to CMYK color, hit OK. Again, here's our blueberry Justin. So what if now, rather than these regular color channels, we took one of the wavelengths from either the infrared or ultraviolet spectrums, if we were to take an infrared scan of Justin, which unfortunately I don't have, and then replace one of our channels with it, or add a fifth or sixth channel with varying degrees of ultraviolet or infrared light, layer that over the top, what sort of effects could we get? There's some very interesting work going on in certain circles right now where people are playing with this concept, and that's pretty exciting. Another thing that's come out of this is modern technology has given us satellite images. Many times, satellite images collect data in the ultraviolet and infrared spectrums, or satellites collect other information, uh, such as radiation or gases. All of this information that, can be that is collected can be funneled into a channel, and that's where these images here of Saturn have come from. None of these images of Saturn are actual visible light. These have been taken and combined from the infrared spectrum and colorized in a manner similar to multi-channel color. 
In this particular image, green has been used to highlight the aurora effect at the south pole of Saturn, whereas in this one here, the color has been adjusted to represent sunlight and where it hits. So there's some very exciting things going on right now that use a process similar to multi-channel color. I highly recommend that if you've never used the multi-channel color space, that you jump in there and you do some experiments, turn some colors blue, change some things around, because anything you change in these channels panels will be then reflected if you switch back to RGB or CMYK or even lab color. Well, that's all for the multi-channel image mode. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and send any questions you may have to requestsitmahalo.com. Thanks for watching.